this is number two. Um, I know that when you're looking at your book, number two is going to be your Protestant Reformation. Um, however, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the Age of Exploration for number two. Woo! <laughs> All right, so this one is going to be pretty short, but it is definitely not a sweet tale for a lot of people when we're talking about that age of exploration. So the age of exploration is really going to start with the 1200s, way back with Marco Polo going and exploring China and opening up that spice, um, that spice route and then that Silk Road route as well. So the three major things that we're thinking about is that's really motivating countries and men to go to these crazy places to explore and to colonize is going to be the three G's. It's going to be God, gold, and glory. So those are going to be the three motivating factors. Um, when we're talking about some of the um, explorers for the Portuguese, we're going to have Prince Henry the Navigator, and he's going to be... Um, you know, right as we're getting into our time period as one of those first Portuguese explorers. Um, so this giant influx of money that's coming in from all of these colonies is definitely going to change the European um, economy significantly. And it's going to change life. A lot of times we think about, you know, Native American brutalization and that sort of thing. But it's also going to really, really affect the economies of Europe as well. Um, we have to think of the creation of things like the Dutch East India Company and the settling down of those nations as well as just the Americas. Um, so, you know, when we're thinking about some of the major explorers, you're going to need to know like um, Diaz and da Gama and Cabral who are going to be exploring that coast of Africa and setting up several Indian trading points, not as in the American, but as in like India, India. <laughs> Um, we're also going to start to see, first off, of course, you have Christopher Columbus who discovers America um, when he sailed the ocean blue. And um, another important one is going to be Ferdinand Magellan. He's going to be that first person who circumnavigated the globe, aka like made it all the way around the globe from Europe and then all the way around back to Europe. And then when we're thinking about specifically people who were not so great to the Native Americans, we're going to be thinking about um, Cortez and Pizarro and how they managed to take over the Aztecs and the Incas in a very pretty brutal sort of way. Um, this is also when we're going to start to see things like the Columbian Exchange. And so the Columbian Exchange is sort of like a triangle where things are getting shipped from, from Europe to Africa. Um, and then from Africa, mostly to the Americas. So, you know, we're going to see things like lots of diseases, like smallpox, influenza. But then you're also going to see cattle, sheep, grains, coffee. All those things are going to be going to the Americas and coming back from the Americas. We're going to see these new things that become staples in the European diet, which is good for the European diet. Um, makes them a lot healthier, can live a lot longer. That's going to be pumpkins, turkeys, peanuts, potatoes, um, corn, vanilla, tobacco, all these things that are going to be moving and introduced to the new America. Um, so America is named after this guy whose name is Amerigo Vespucci. And the reason, really the most important that we remember his name is because he's the first person who's like, you know, I think that this land might not be India and <laughs> might be like a totally separate land, a whole new world. And so um, that's why we call it America is after Amerigo. Um, we're going to see that economic power that's really coming through the Renaissance in Italy and it's going to be shifting over the Atlantic coast. So it's going to be France a little bit, but mostly like Spain, Portugal, um, England is going to start setting up some colonies when we get a little bit later on. Um, with the triangular trade and the Colombian trade routes, we're also going to see an increase in slavery. And, you know, pre this time period, slavery could be between any race of people. Now it's going to become specifically racially based slavery, as Africans are going to be moving over to these European settled areas. And in the European settled areas in the Americas, they don't have the same color skin as us, and so that's how it's used as like a distinctive between are you European or are you something else. Um, with this is kind of the um, plantation system that's being set up 
It's not necessarily just the American like cotton, but it's also gonna be using the native tribes as well, especially in like the Caribbean, they're gonna be growing tobacco and sugar cane and doing that really, really harsh encomienda system, which ends up wiping out most of the native population. So when we're looking at Europe, how is Europe changing throughout all of this? Well, there's this thing called the commercial revolution, if you remember it. Commercial revolution is a shift because when we're thinking about even up until the Renaissance, everybody is farming to be able to just survive through the winter, which is rough when you have um, winters or starvation, that happens a lot. Versus now we have enough money to pour into new technologies to grow more and more food, to grow into commercial farming, commercial production. So we're getting all this new raw product for the new world and we're able to produce better products with it. And so you're able to increase the amount of money in new technology and new inventions, which ends up less starvation for everybody, which is a good thing. Um, with that also kind of comes this thing called the price revolution. And so now that people have more money, the prices of things are gonna gradually and actually rapidly increase in how much things cost. And how are we gonna handle all this massive amounts of wealth that we didn't have and how are we gonna handle it now in the United States? So part of that kind of goes through the Netherlands and through the Dutch and through their creation of not only the Dutch East India Trading Company, but the creation of stocks and investments and not just one really, really rich family, but a lot of businesses being invested into. So unfortunately for a lot of people, the rich Europeans are gonna be the best benefactors of this situation. Native Americans, African Americans, Africans, um, they're definitely not gonna be prosperous. And poor Europeans, their standard of living is gonna raise. However, they're not able to fully take control of this whole commercial revolution and are kind of hit by the price revolution because they still have to pay taxes versus in a lot of these countries, these European countries, the, um, the rich and elite do not have to pay taxes. So they're able to better invest their money and grow their wealth versus we still have quite a few poor people who are still stuck in subsistence farming or still stuck in some sort of a tenant farming situation. So with the changes that you're gonna see in the everyday average lives of the common man in Europe, um, kind of with that price revolution and the commercial revolution, um, you're also going to start to see the way a change in the way that people grow food. So before this time period, everyone would grow everything in open fields. And then when the price revolution and the commercial revolution changed, we're no longer have, going to have communal growing. It's going to change over to enclosing things and rotating crops to let the land lie fallow, which makes things more productive over time. Um, this is also when we're going to see this idea of um, mercantilism, which is where the colony ships a whole bunch of things over to the, um, the home mother country. And so the mother country ends up getting a lot of um, good things because they get the raw materials and then they make everything and then they sell them back to the colonies, which they really need to be able to survive. Um, so that's basically that idea of mercantilism. You're gonna to start to see a huge um, shift in populations. We're gonna to start to see people moving away from rural areas, kind of starting to see starting to see the growth of cities. Um, and of course, that's not going to be super great for as far as um, crime and poverty. And um, you know, they've never really been that great at planning out cities. And how we're gonna like we're gonna put our poop and like all those um, interesting interesting things that kind of go along with that. Um, and so to kind of wrap up our ideas here, I kind of wanted to go back and look at that key concept that we um, we looked at in the last video about the Renaissance. So if you're looking at your key concepts, so like what is the main idea of the age of exploration? It's going to be key concept 1.4, which says that Europeans explored and settled overseas territories encountering and interacting with indigenous populations. So that's gonna be um, your Native Americans. And then as far as how does that affect your everyday European, it's gonna be concept 1.5, which says that European society and the experiences of everyday life were increasingly shaped by the commercial and agricultural capitalism. 
notwithstanding the persistence of medieval and social and economic structures. Really fancy way of saying that Europe is going to change because of the age of exploration. So as we can see, just kind of remember for the age of exploration, how does it affect the Americas? How is it going to affect the native populations? And then how is that going to affect the, the economies in Europe?